There's no doubt that Guy Ritchie is obviously synonymous with the British gangster flick. But I'll tell you what, out of absolutely nowhere, from seeming vast, empty oceanness, comes this brilliant movie called Bermondsey Fall of the Roman Empire. And listen, this was sent to me as a <coughs> excuse me. This was sent to me as a screener. Shout out to uh, to my PRs out there who are who are looking after the channel. Love and respect to you all. But th this this completely blindsided me. Now, when it comes to reviewing independent films, you also you obviously have to look at it through a different lens than you would a big scale blockbuster. Um, not even a blockbuster, but a movie with, should we say, a bigger budget. You have to appreciate maybe some of the themes going on with it. You have to appreciate some of the subliminal messaging going on with it, or not subliminal messaging, just themes and narratives in general. You usually have a chance to have more fleshed out important matter in the indie movies. But Bermondsey Tales, man, it feels right out of Guy Ritchie's playbook. Um, I I'm still a bit in shock about what I saw here, because... It centers around a family of gangsters who have lost the head of the family and through really, really brilliant back and forth non-linear narrative storytelling, it tells the story of after the head of the family being gone, how this family essentially self-implodes and falls apart. And it's got all of the atypical cockney rhyming slam the the brilliant guy richie-esque dialogue the i guess the only thing i would add to it is that it's obviously not on guy richie's level that's what separates him and in fact you know that's what makes guy richie special is the fact that he can do what he does in the realm of british gangster movies pretty much better than anyone um you know shout out to matthew vaughan and all that but guy richie's the king of that and yet somehow, despite the fact that... I'll, I'll say this. Let me pull a negative out here right out of the bat. The editing in this movie annoyed the living bejesus out of me. Because it seemed that every single character needed a forced black screen title card. White Courtney rhyming slang gangster who's going to read the title off really tough now. You know what I mean? You slag. Every sort of 20 minutes, the flow of the scenes and of the narrative got interrupted by black title screen, title of the character that was about to be explored. So, although the denouement of the narrative, the chronology of the narrative is non-linear, which I like it when movies do that, and you do have a bit of back and forth, and filling in the gaps through flashbacks or through plot devices, all of these things are good. What did annoy me was the fact that the way that the editing was cut up, it unfortunately did feel a bit amateur hour, and it stopped what felt like a really good flow of the movie. However, where the movie came into its own is that there were genuine laugh out loud scenes in here. I'm it, 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 please do watch this movie because. And think of me when you're seeing the scene of all of them being pill-riddled in Amsterdam. It's not quite Jordan Belfort takes quaaludes in The Wolf of Wall Street, man. But it's it, it's not far off from that. And then I have to talk about the cast of this movie. Because it, it it's like they've assembled the kind of... I guess you would call it the best of the rest of... Uh, 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 of, uh, of, uh, of British talent. Because y you've got the likes... Oh, you, it, it, it's really quite brilliant. You've got the likes of John Hanna in there, who you'll know from things like The Mummy. You've got Frank Harper, who's the big bad dude from from Football Factory. Maisie Smith from EastEnders. Alan Ford, you know, Bricktop from frickin' Snatchers in this. You know, the, the, the list goes on. You've got, you've got Daniel O'Reilly, who was recently in A Gangster's Kiss. I might review it on this channel, actually. You know... Charlie Chapman, who is in Hollyoaks and had a brief stint in Kick-Ass. Vaz Blackwood, who you'll know from things like Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, Creep and Mean Machine. And even people like David Schull, who, you know, you'll know probably more commonly as Jay's dad from The Inbetweeners. So it's kind of like this weird Millie Miller 
of best of the rest British actors. And against all odds, it just somehow works. Along with the quirky narrative and along with what is essentially a really interesting take. And almost, I guess you would call it a love letter to the gangster genre. This all just works brilliantly. Now, I keep on referencing Guy Ritchie. I do want to say, you know, temper your expectations a little bit. This isn't on the level of Snatch and Lockstock. If you go in there saying, but Nico promised me Snatch and Lockstock, I'm not. But I'm saying, and, and equally, it's not The Gentleman or Rock and Roller. It's not Guy Ritchie's level. But it doesn't have to be to be good. <laughs> like... This is a seriously, brilliantly fun, well-made movie. I, I'm still in awe of how much I enjoyed it. And you know what? As a result, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to score Bermondsey Tales, Fall of the Roman Empire. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, man. It's really... It's probably one that you will not have heard of this year. And I'd go as far as to say that it's one that you should absolutely seek out, be it on streaming or video on demand, whatever. Find it. You know, if you're bored of all the tried and tested AAA blockbusters, and that seems to be the you know the universal theme amongst movie fans at the moment. They don't make original movies anymore. It's incorrect, but I'll go on to that on another video. This is a movie you could go and support if you're of that mindset. Go and support this film because, man, it is good good and i think if you're fans of that genre i think you're gonna have a real laugh with it and with all that said i want to throw it over to you guys having heard me do you think you're gonna go and seek out berman's tales i'd really love to know if if you're gonna give this your time and if you are amongst the select few who do find it and who go and see it what did you think of it Leave your comments down below because i want to hear from you guys and have i said enough to make you be interested to go out and see it let me know. Let's 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 get the ball talking, man. Let's get the ball talking. Let's get the ball rolling and talk about it. Um, but until next time, I'm going to do... You should have an interview coming soon. There'll be a BBC Radio 2 special with myself and OJ Borge regarding Lord of the Rings coming up. But the way you want to stay on top of all that is hit the subscribe button that is right here. There's another video for you up here, which is another one of the recent reviews. I'm Nico Lura from the Silver Screen Dudes, and I will see you guys really soon. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye for now.